Welcome to the DominoVolt step-by-step -step tutorial version 104. This is a redo of the original DominoVolt step-by-step -step tutorial which takes advantage of new capabilities which are in version 104. In this tutorial we're going to build a training course catalog and registration app. We're going to start with a spreadsheet which is going to form the basis of the catalog and then we're going to add an app page with a data grid where we can go through the different courses and select one that we want to attend, register for it, be redirected back to the home page, go to the My Request tab, and see the status of your request. Workflow is added so your manager can get a notification and then approve or deny the request. What you need to get started is the DominoVault 104 step-by-step -step tutorial PDF, the course catalog spreadsheet, and of course DominoVault 104, which if you want you can do this in the sandbox. Now these materials you can get in the DominoVault showroom and you can navigate to the DominoVault showroom from the sandbox intro page. We just simply go to sample apps and the document that you want is training registration. You'll see once you accept the terms three different downloads. The first one is the finished application, the second one is the spreadsheet, and the third one is the PDF. So let's start building. The steps start on number two with creating the course catalog app from a spreadsheet. So to do this, we'll go over to DominoVault, say new application from spreadsheet, click next, and then we'll go get the spreadsheet, click next, and click next and we have our app. The app is now deployed. To see it we can go into view data. You can see it took the columns from the spreadsheet and made them columns in the database. We can see the corresponding form by specifying that we want it in the right side of the panel here and we can click through and see the records in a form. Moving on to number three, we'll create an app page for viewing the catalog data. So let's close out of the view data and we'll edit the application. I'm going to click the plus next to app pages and I'm going to add a new app page. I'll call it catalog and register. Next I'm going to go to the form. I'm going to rename sheet one to catalog. I'm going to go back to the app page. I'm going to put a text item across the top. I'll type in training course catalog and registration and I'll set this to H1 and I'll drag that across the entire width of the app page. Next part of the tutorial is adding a data grid to the app page. So we'll go to our app and down at the bottom under advanced we'll grab the data grid and put that below the title. We'll select the form that we want to use as a, an input, which is the catalog form we, we created from the, the spreadsheet. You can select metadata. In this case, we want to select uh, user-defined fields. In the course catalog, we'll take course, the date of the course, and then the location of the course. We're going to skip any sort order that we want to define, and then we're going to skip any filters. 
and go with the defaults and we'll drag this across the app page. Next we're going to go back to the form that we created and we're going to select the fields that we're using in the data grid and for the properties of the fields we're going to set the sort options to both. This will allow us to sort these fields in the data grid by clicking on the column heads. Now we can go back to the app page, click into the data grid, and let's change the title to course list. And with the data grid highlighted, let's go to the ellipse after each one of the column titles. And what we're going to do is select properties and allow users to sort. And then finally we're going to unselect allow users to open the record since we're using this as a selection mechanism as opposed to a way to get to the underlying form of the catalog record. Moving on to 3.2, setting the app page to the home page, we'll go back to the application and under settings at the bottom you'll see home page and we'll make the home page the catalog and register app page. 3.3 is about testing the work that we've done so far. So let's go back to the app. We're going to click save. We'll close the design mode, deploy the app. Launch it. We see the title, the data grid, and the fact that we can sort the columns. And when we double click into a record, it does not open. Moving on, we're now ready to customize the app page for course selection and registration. We go back to our app, close the test page, go back and edit the application. We're going to go to the app page and below the data grid, we're going to put a section. We'll name that section hidden and it's always a good idea to rename your IDs. Now in the hidden section what you need to do is add a number of different items which you see in the table here. A single line for course, a multi-line for description, etc. So these are the item types, names, and IDs which you should use. And rather than you watching me in a video type all these, I'll go ahead and do them and show you the end result. So when you're finished, it should look like this. Get course, description, location, cost, etc. And the names of the fields and the IDs match those in the table. Moving on to section 3.5, we're going to add some JavaScript to the data grid on row select event. So we'll go back to the app, select the data grid, and under events we see this event called on row select. So this fires when the user of the application clicks on a row. So we're going to take the JavaScript in the PDF and paste it in here. Be mindful that when you copy and paste from a PDF it doesn't necessarily throw in the line breaks, so you may need to do some editing. Now the way these commands work, and they're all the same, is we're setting the value of the item that you put into the hidden section so you can see f course, f cost, f description, etc. prefaced by app page. Because it's on an app page, we're setting the value of that item to row data dot and then the corresponding field in the catalog form. So when I select a row, it's going to look at the row data 
and then go grab the field that I want from the catalog form and then use that to populate the item. So we'll click OK. We'll save this. We'll close out a design. Redeploy. Launch. And we'll test to see if this works. And it does. Next, we'll do some work to improve the presentation of the selected course information. Go back to the app. Close out the runtime. Edit. And on the app page, we're going to add a section. Load the data grid. Drag it across the entire width of the app page. Add a third column. Set the section so that the background color and the border do not show. And then what we're going to do is add our first piece of text. And in here, we're going to use the insert dropdown because we want to grab the course field, which is just below it. And we want to set the format of that to H1. So this is what's known as echo text. I'm going to take the value on a page and echo it in text. And we're ultimately going to hide this section and not use this presentation of the information. I'll show the last couple of steps. We'll add an image below instructor in the first column. And we want to set the height of this to 100. It's a way to normalize the different image sizes. And we'll add uh, text item up here. We'll call this description. And then below it we'll add the description echo text. We'll drag that across and we'll drag it down and we're done. Next we're going to go back to the step-by-step -step guide and after that part of the exercise which we just completed there's a line of JavaScript we're going to copy this and we're going to come back over to the data grid on row select event and I'll space down a bit so you can see this. It'll stand out a little easier. It says app page f underscore image one. So this is the image item that we put in that section. And we're going to set the URL of it to the value of a URL which is in a field in the form catalog called f underscore picture one. So that'll populate a picture for us. We're going to go back and get the next line of JavaScript. And then we're going to come over to the on data change event. And we're going to paste this in. And what this command does, it says app page f underscore data grid one, which is the ID of the data grid. And we're going to select the first row. So when the data is loaded, when you sort a column, when you use the pagination features, it's always going to select the first row. And then finally, the last JavaScript command we're going to copy. And we're going to bring over. And we're going to add it to the F underscore hidden section on show event. And this command says set visible false. So this is a simple JavaScript way of hiding that section. So now we can save this, close out a design, deploy it, update, and launch it to see if it works. So you can see the first row is selected. As I click through, the information is echoing into the text. The image is set, the height is 100, and the hidden section is hidden. Moving on to section 4, we're going to create the request form. So we'll go back in to edit the app. And under forms, we're going to add a new form and we're going to call this requests. And we're going to add some text across the top. 
training request form and we'll change the style of that to H1. Next we're going to add a section below the title. We'll drag that across the width of the form and we're going to start putting some fields in here. We'll start with name and we'll give that an ID of F underscore name. And rather than you watch me add all these fields, I'll refer you back to the step-by-step -step guide where you can see the items on the palette, the names, and the ID. And you're going to add these in the same fashion that you did to the section on the app page earlier in the exercise. So when you're finished, it should look like this. In section 4.1, we're going to go through the steps for improving the presentation of the form items. And this is pretty much the same idea as what we did in the app page earlier. We'll add a text item below the title of the form. We'll type in course. We'll make this H1. Put a colon on there. And then we'll add a space and put in the course echo text. And then moving along, uh, I've entered the employee date, location, and cost. I'll highlight these and then I'll use the indent icon to give them a little offset. I'll drag the text item across the width of the page and then below it I'll go get an entry item, a multi-line entry item, and below this I'm going to call this business justification. We'll set this to a width of full and we'll display two rows and we'll stretch that across the width of the form. Moving on to section 4.2.1, we're going to pre-populate user and manager information in the form. To do this, we're going to select the request form and the form on new event. So this event fires when the form is new, when it's first created. So in other words, only in start stage. And we're going to call a service and we're going to pick a service from the catalog and the type of service is going to be a domino directory service and we're going to get user by identifier and the identifier is going to be the current user so then we're going to get the internet email address and map that into the email field in the section we'll get the display name and we'll map that into name and we'll get the manager name and we'll map that into manager name. Next we're going to cover how do we pre-populate the course information in the form. The first thing we're going to do is take this JavaScript which is here and we're going to copy that and come over to the form and go back into the form on new event and we'll paste this in and what this does is it sets the field course number which we put in the section to the value of a parameter that we're going to pass this form from the app page and that parameter is going to be called course number now we haven't set up the, the logic to actually pass that parameter yet but this is the catcher of that parameter all right, so when the form is new, it's going to see the parameter in the URL and it's going to set this field to that number, which leads us to the next thing we need to do. When this number changes, so, so going to the events for the course number, we're going to go to the on change event and we're going to call a service and the service we're going to call is in the current app and what we want to do is retrieve from the catalog and the input that we're going to use to retrieve from the catalog is the course number and then what we want to do is populate the course date
the course title, the location, and the cost. So that way when we open this form using that parameter, those values, values will be passed in here and then will be echoed up above. And like we did with the app page for the section on the on show event, we'll paste in this bit of JavaScript which makes it not show. So item set visible false. So we'll save this, close, and deploy. Now we go over to the app page and we create the registration link which sends the URL and parameter. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the form in edit mode again. I should say open up the app in edit mode. Go to the app page and to the right of the course text let's put in a link and instead of go to HCL we'll call this link register for a course. Okay on to 5.1 where we pass the parameter based on your selection. This is where the magic happens. So we're going to copy this JavaScript from the document and we're going to come over to the link on click event and when we paste this in from the PDF um, one thing that I'm noticing is uh, the PDF doesn't really have a valid quote mark <laughs> So what you need to do is make sure that you've got valid single or double quote marks here. So you can call out the text strings. Um, I'll try to do what I can to um, perhaps fix that in the PDF, but just note that extra caution when you're copying from a PDF into um, a JavaScript editor. Uh, but the way this works is uh, we set a variable called course number and it's getting the course number from the field that we put on the app page. Remember the hidden section? We're using row data to get that, that information and pass it into those different fields. Well, it's getting that, that field and setting a variable. And then it's building the URL. And the first piece of the URL is going to be the URL to launch the form, so the request form. And there's a very useful function called app get form launch URL. So no matter what domain you're on, this is always going to work. Uh, the constant that you need to plug in here is the ID of the form. And then we're appending to this a text string, ampersand course number equals. So this is your standard uh, URL syntax for setting up a parameter. And then we're adding the course number. And then the last line is we're setting the web link to the value of the URL. So those three lines do all the magic. And then the other thing I like to do is set the link navigation so it points to the request form. Now I'm doing this via JavaScript dynamically, but when I do this and specify not to open in a new tab by making this unselected, it honors it. So now we can save this, close it, redeploy it and see if it works. We'll register for this advanced nominal vote course. We see that it's coming up with the context that's appropriate. We'll go to new higher orientation. It's coming up with new higher orientation. Moving on to number six, we're going to add workflow to the request form. But before we get into workflow, we're going to rename this application to something that's more appropriate for what it really does. Now we can go in and edit it. And we're going to click on the workflow icon, otherwise known as stages. 
and we're going to click on the request form. The first thing I'm going to do is delete the cancel button. I'm not a fan of them. And then I'm going to come over to the submit action and I'm click on the cogwheel. And for the action completion URL, I'm going to paste in the URL starting with the slash volt dot dash apps to my home page. So this is the URL that brings you to the app page where you make your course selection. So you only need this part of the URL. You could add the entire URL, but if you add just that bit, uh, you can have this app work on different domains. Uh, the other thing I'd add is if you delete the body of the success message, it won't show. Right? So what I just did there ensures that when the requester submits the request, they're re redirected back to the app page. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of new stages. So when the form is submitted, it goes to the submitted stage. And we want two stages after this approved. And we're going to add another one called denied. And when it's in submitted, I want a button that says approve. And when the manager approves it, it goes to the approved stage. Let's delete cancel from this stage. We're going to add another submit button. And in this case, it's going to be deny. So if the manager clicks this, it's going to go to denied. So you can see that we go from start to submitted. There's a choice for the manager in submitted to approve or deny it. And then it goes to the approved or denied stage. The next thing we're going to do is go to the access tab. And we're going to define a new role. We're going to call this role manager. And we're going to set the role to open. The reason we're doing this is because we want to make a dynamic assignment to that manager role. And we're then going to go under stage settings. You'll see the catalog form and the request form. Go to the submitted stage for the request form. And you'll see the new manager role, which we just added. Click update because the manager needs to update the form. So now we can move on to 6.1, making the dynamic assignment of the manager to the manager role via a service call. Going back to the app in the workflow design, if we click on the submit properties, up at the top we're going to see activities and if we click on the drop down, we'll get to assign users by service call. So what we want to do is pick the domino directory service, get user by identifier, and then the user that we want to map is the manager. And we want to get the internet email and map that to member. And we're done. Now this is also the place where you can send out notifications. So if you want a notification to the manager uh, with a link to the form that they approve or a link to a, an app page with a, uh, a dashboard for them to approve items, uh, you would do this here. Moving on to section 7, my request, we're going to start with adding a tab section to our app page. So I'm going to grab the tabs item and put that up at the top. The first item I'm going to call the catalog. And then I'm going to add another one. And we'll call this my requests. Or you could call this the course catalog. 
we'll drag that across both columns and then with the course catalog selected take the data grid and drag it in to the tab folder and then take the section below this for the display and drag that just below it into the same tab on the folder. All right, so that's all in course catalog. And then we come over to my requests. And here we can add a second data grid. And instead of the catalog form, we're going to use the request form. And we're going to set the columns to stage created on, last updated by, and last updated on. And then we'll add date and course. We'll go with the defaults and drag this across. And since the tab says my request, we can just blank out the title and delete any unused rows. You do this by clicking on the side of the row which invokes this pop-up and you can just simply delete those rows. So everything looks like it's in good shape. It's time now to save the application. and deploy it. And the final step of the exercise is to test the finished app. So we see the tab folder no requests at this point. So we can go ahead and select a course. We're redirected back and we can see the request and then track its status. So that concludes the tutorial. Thank you.